For those of you who don't know me yet, I'm Heidi Reese from Dayton Superior's Marketing Training Department, and I just want to go over a few things before we all get started. So like normal, everyone that calls in has been muted so that the webinar can be free of other disruptions on the line and everyone can hear. Uh, but please feel free to provide any questions you have throughout the presentation or at the end when we have a question and answer session. You can do that through the chat functionality in the Zoom. Okay. Also, each of the webinars are recorded and placed on our Dayton Superior website and our YouTube channel. So anytime you want to go out there and see anything that we've done in the past, feel free to do that. And you can download and watch again. And this one will be recorded as well. Okay, as I mentioned, we are going to be discussing an intro to Dayton Superior's and Simon's engineering services today. This will be very high level and we'll look at all the different variations really quick to get a taste of what is offered. And later this year, we will be diving into forming and tilt in different training Tuesdays through, um, and we've also had the estimation tool for tilt. So you can, if you missed that one, you can go out and check it out on the YouTube channels I just referred to. So today we'll be touching upon precast, bridge deck forming, tilt up, and tilt works, along with the Simons forming services available to you through our dedicated engineers. Okay, with that, let's talk about who is going to be presenting. Today's presenter doesn't need any kind of introduction, but I'm going to tell you a little bit about him anyway, because all you guys know our good friend Chuck Hoke. So Chuck has been in the construction industry for over 48 years, where 20 of those were as a dealer for accessories, forming, chemicals, you name it. He has been a product manager along with other positions in Dayton Superior for the, for the other 20 years, and he's broadened himself to really be an excellent subject matter expert in many topics and products. He's currently our national training manager and is available for various longer trainings than we do for the Training Tuesdays. So keep that in mind if you want to, uh, to have him come to your, your office, your company. So without further ado, let's give Chuck a big Training Tuesday welcome. Thank you, Heidi. As we talk, we're, today we're going to talk about just a quick overview introduction to engineer support services. Uh, across the Dayton Superior uh, product line, considering uh, including precast, bridge deck, tilt up, and we'll also get into Simon's forming. So let's talk about precast first. Uh, precast typically we can run everything engineering support through and by uh, design by formula. Uh, for form for strength and calculations as far as calculations within inserts based off of concrete thickness, strength of concrete, uh, et cetera. Uh, the formula that we typically use is prior to 2004 because it is a little bit more accurate uh, in today's uh, in, uh, environment. And you will find that our numbers that we typically do, we're on the kind of based on the conservative side of the envelope. We like to make sure that uh, everything works and works extremely well for us. Uh, and we also have in-service applications for insert capacity, concrete capacity, tension, and shear. Uh, we also take into consideration, obviously, safe working loads for all of those uh, factors within the calculations. <clears throat> considerations that we look at in precast, uh, lifting hardware capacity, the insert capacity, based off of concrete capacity, because as we all know, thickness of concrete relates to capacity of the concrete as along with the strength of the concrete. And then we also take in any additional forces that may be taking, uh, uh, play, have a play in the overall capacity of the insert, such as rigging, uh, where we're dealing with sling angles may uh, change, uh, or actually pro, uh, 
actually add additional loading to the insert uh, where we also will be talking about adhesion or suction to the formwork and that initial lift from the product from the actual form system typically relates to uh, anywhere from 15 to 25 percent additional weight uh, accustomed to the uh, precast product once it's lifted. And then obviously we're going to be looking at transportation dynamics. Thin edge calculations must be done if there will be a force applied to that direction. Uh, as in with a uh, thin slab, uh, a lot of times we see thin slab uh, applications we are going to be lifting in a shear type application with them. Uh, so we have to take into consideration pop out strength of the concrete with the anchor. And obviously the safe working load of the component altogether, including concrete strength and insert strength. When you're looking at inserts, you're gonna to wanna to start looking at what, what insert really does work. We have a multitude of different inserts that will work for picking concrete. Things that we need to be looking at is what the weight of the concrete element, the adhesion to the concrete form, uh, the concrete PSI at the first lift, Insert location, whether it's going to be an edge condition, a thin wall, et cetera. Uh, we're going to also be looking at rigging. Uh, the direction of the pole, the angle of the swings to the insert. Uh, the greater the angle of to the insert, the greater the load put on the insert itself, uh, creating a heavier, uh, uh, basically a reduction in lifting capacity. And then obviously we're going to look at number of times the insert's utilized. Uh, a lot of times in precast we have a four to one safety factor because we understand that the insert is going to be used multiple times. Uh, flexural stresses basically on tall panels uh, and then unusual handling dynamic loads as far as shapes of, of panels, et cetera. Adhesion, something a lot of people take for granted, but basically when you're lifting a piece of uh, precast component pieces out of their formwork, you can anticipate adding, adding anything from 20 pounds per square foot for a concrete form, all the way up to about 75 pounds per square foot based off of a ribbed surface. Now, typically, if you're looking at a steel form, you're at about 25 pounds per square foot, and plywood's going to be around 50 pounds per square foot. The angle of pick is also going to play a factor in. The multiplication factor is over based off of the angle. Uh, typically, everything, all inserts have a safe working load and tension. And that tension load is based off of a 90, 90 degree pick. Once you start changing from that, you actually start uh, increasing the multiplication factor of, uh, or the basically reduction in lift capacity of that insert. Requirements for precast. Obviously, we all have to pay attention to what OSHA has to put forward. Uh, we followed 1926-704-A. Uh, precast concrete wall units and structural framing and tilt-up panels must be adequately supported, basically to prevent overturning and twisting uh, and to prevent any collapse until the permanent connections are made. That's it for the precast end of it. Obviously, uh, any additional precast uh, uh, subjects can be 
uh, talk to our engineering group and we can answer any of those questions. Bridge deck forming. Uh, we want a comprehensive bridge deck estimating and informing uh, program here at Dayton Superior where we typically uh, design and detail overhangs and overhang bracket usage within the form systems along with interior deck forming if needed. Typically, if you have a bridge project, you're looking at a multiple number of pages within the plans. Don't get nervous. Uh, we only need probably three or four pages, you know, to, uh, to suffice to get all the information we need to run the calculations. Now, this is one part where the contractor actually has to play a part also because the contractor will have to give us his load, load uh, of his finishing machine. The finishing machine is something that typically is a lot like buying a car. You can buy a stripped down model and the weight of the finishing machine will get added to it. So, uh, and we'll talk about that in a couple of slides here, but right now with the typical deck section here, when you're looking at it, on this drawing, you're gonna be looking at uh, we get the out-to-out -out of the bridge deck from outside of fascia to outside of fascia. We get the spacing of the girders, the deck thickness, the overhang thickness, and the overhang dimension. Not to mention from here we can also get all of the rebar information for rebar estimating as far as uh, supports. And then we'll also need a framing plan, which will actually give us a, a layout of the girders, whether it be concrete or steel, along with the diaphragms, and basically the dimensions on the girders, whether it's steel or uh, concrete. We've made life easy. The information that we typically need is all listed right here on our bridge deck information sheet, which you can uh, get from any of our regional sales managers. And <clears throat> this information here, uh, basically we're talking about if we have to do just the overhang section or if we have to do the overhang plus the interior dimension. A lot of times in today's bridges, uh, the interior bays are now covered with SIP decking, which basically eliminates the need for any interior deck forming. Or in some states, it will use a concrete plank of, of uh, about three inch thick concrete that will actually span from the uh, girder to girder, eliminating the need for, uh, once again, any interior forming. At that point, we're primarily concentrating on the fascia and overhang. So talking about the fascia and overhang, we have basically our C49, C49D overhang brackets. Uh, our C49 bracket, which is our standard overhang bracket, typically has a vertical adjustment of 30 to 50 inch with a 54 inch horizontal. Uh, adjustments on the vertical leg are every two inches. When you get to the C49D, it is a 50 to 70 inch vertical adjustment, same 54 inch horizontal. And we also have our C49S bracket. Now the C49S bracket is the C49 bracket where we must field modify it by taking out the inner pipe on the vertical leg and attaching the outer pipe to the horizontal member. And that can be done relatively easily by removing two bolts. Uh, they, all these component pieces have a safe working load of 3,750 pounds, safe working load. 
The finishing machine, as we talked about earlier, usually rides on the outside of the form, supported by the overhang bracket. Typically, the finishing machine is going to uh, usually end up accumulating about 50 to 60 percent of the weight that the overhang bracket must support at any given time. Sometimes it's a little more, sometimes it's a little less. In some states, though, the DOT is actually requiring that the finishing machine is now running on the exterior girder because what is happening is the finishing machines are getting so big and becoming so heavy they cannot support, sit on the overhang bracket and allow the concrete, the overhang bracket to support the finishing machine along with the concrete that's being poured on it. The information that we typically need, we're going to be looking for the wheels per side, the wheel spacing, and the wheel weights. All this information is located on that bridge deck information sheet. Uh, typically, most of our, uh, we recommend that they, the contractor uh, help fill that out because he's the one that's going to know what machine he's got. Once we calculate all this, we end up getting a printout of the calculations. Uh, this not only tells you the spacing of the overhang with the the loading on the diagonal member of the bracket on the overhang bracket, but what it also gives you is how to set up the overhang bracket prior to putting it into place. So there's a lot of valuable information on this sheet. Uh, this is a, uh, a item that we typically charge for, uh, and but going forward you can get that with a drawing and then make that as part of your submittal package to the DOTs. Let's talk about tilt-up. At Dayton Superior, we have our separate uh, group here of, called Tilt Works. They actually uh, handle all the tilt-up application engineering. Uh, Superior Tilt uh, typically they, they run through all of the different connections in the engineering network for tilt-up. Basically bracing, insert length, uh, any uh, uh, panel strength with relationship to rebar location, et cetera, so you can reduce cracking from the stresses of the picking of the panel. Uh, all these components can act, will be calculated through our TiltWorks panel, our panel pro, uh, program. And what uh, we can also run here is any of our bracing, whether it be to the floor slab or to a helical ground anchor system, based off of what can be, what's needed on site. We can also do other things. Our superior tool program will actually run uh, bar lifts, for you, it can run uh, incidental uh, components such as reveals, chamfers, et cetera, that are going to be needed. Uh, the program itself is a, uh, a web-based program, so it is basically available to any contractor or dealer 24-7 uh, who has a license. The estimation program, like I said, runs down through. It does uh, location of panels uh, in relationship to concrete bending and stresses, where window openings, door openings are going to be, where additional rebar would need to be placed, uh, and any bracing requirements that would also fall into play here. Uh, they offer a great program right now where they will offer a flat fee for a, an estimate. And then once the order is placed for all of the materials, they will reduce that estimate by the cost of the estimation charge, making the net cost zero. Uh, for basically for projects here, it, uh, it runs through any of the different projects that you can keep track of. It also manages to highlight any past projects. If you want to have a license yourself, you can actually keep that. 
so it can actually keep track of all the projects that you've done over the past couple of years uh, right at, the, at your fingertips. It will also print out a comprehensive material list for the projects uh, based off of uh, panel heights, weight, width, et cetera, uh, bracing inserts, uh, shim packs, uh, brace anchors, all, all of the products that are typically associated with the tilt job can be, will be found on this package. Uh, basically, all, on this system here, we have over 100 years of combined experience in tilt-up software solutions with, that have developed this program. Multiple in-house professional engineers covering all 50 states. Uh, we also have pre-engineered design calls with contractor in every project. Basically, if you need call, uh, assistance in a pre-construction pre call, we are available for that uh, with our with our engineers. Typically, here when we look at our panel books, our panel books are fairly straightforward. One of the great things about it is everything is always located in the same location on every panel sheet going forward. Uh, so your information for rigging, bracing, and lifting are also and also product project information are always located at the same uh, site within the page. We also have available an estimating program uh, where you can either sign in online uh, on our DaytonSuperior.com site. Uh, this, if you're looking for directions on how to use it, there is a uh, training video that was put out on Training Tuesdays a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we also have available for those of you that still like to do things the longhand way, uh, an estimating charts available so you can actually see what the difference is between using different braces uh, with your pan different selected panels. Simons Corporation, Simons uh, product of Dayton Superior. Uh, basically, as in they, Simons is our concrete forming division. They typically design and do layouts for all concrete forming projects. Uh, you can see basically some of the easy uh, projects. They go basically from easy to extremely complex projects. Uh, as you can see there, the plans are concise, easy to read, and uh, quite simple to follow. Uh, you get a, an overall layout, and then you get a, a detailed layout for the different panels being used in tie locations. You also end up getting uh, any other shoring technical details for basically where any of the corner details, the intersection details uh, are all located. And you can see how the uh, tie locations are located on the forms. Here we have a gang form system on the, on the drawing on the uh, left-hand side. And you can see how they have the, where the panel is laid out from the back side can be then picked and put in place. What it should look like, want to see rested into place and put together tie, with tie locations all intact. And on the right hand side, you're looking at a uh, bridge pier going in place here, what it should look like for uh, basically pouring a bridge cap on this structure here, location of steel form being located, what panels are located where, and how they're actually to be attached. You will also see a biosolids digester. This is a, uh, an extremely complex project here uh, that we are currently working on in uh, California. As you can see, the detail on it with the, the colored drawings 
makes life a lot easier for the Jai guys in the field to follow and understand what's being done on these projects. Uh, this is actually a wastewater treatment plant being uh, constructed here uh, with this uh, basically bio solids digester in house, in place, uh, and the uh, capabilities of our engineering department running the calculations, knowing how long all these different braces and support members need to be along with the formwork and how it's going to react when it's being loaded. Here we've got forms being uh, used vertically and horizontally and in a conical shape also, which means that nothing is the same. So every, every, every foot higher, something actually changes within the system. So uh, these systems are extremely uh, uh, involved and you can see the amount of work that's actually involved in doing these drawings and calculations. No matter what system you use, Dayton Superior offers a full line of resources available. We have full in-house engineering staffs on at all on all three all three uh, fields, four fields that we have mentioned. Uh, we have application guides available, tech data sheets available, and handbooks available for you. And if you're looking for more information on forming engineering or TiltWorks, we've got you covered. TiltWorks was a feat, will, will be featured in October, Tuesday training session. Uh, <clears throat> you've also got our engine, our uh, estimating program that is done. Uh, and also in uh, November, we will be offering a Simons Forming Engineering uh, presentation uh, that will deal primarily with the forming aspect of it in the forming division. With that being done, I'd like to say thank you. And if you have any questions, please use your chat feature. And yeah, thanks, Chuck. So like Chuck said, just uh, give us some questions through the Zoom chat functionality. I'll give you a little chance there to type something in. Just as a reminder, we record this. We're recording right now so that you can see all of these. They're very quick, high-level introduction to things. If you find that you want to go into a deeper dive, contact us through that training at DaytonSuperior.com that you see on your screen, and we can set something up for you or try to find a way to accommodate what you need. Any questions out there? Okay, well, so this presentation will be made available in a couple hours, and I will send a note out to let you know. Appreciate you guys coming and listening in to our training Tuesday, and big thanks to Chuck for presenting, and all you guys have a happy Tuesday. See you next time.